Hi, Aaron Sylvan here, and today we're going to talk about how to stitch together videos shot with this bad boy, the Kodak SP360 4K. It's a dual camera rig, so we're going to have two hemispheric images that we need to stitch together using Autopano Video and Autopano Giga. Okay, so hopefully we've got our files all nicely organized. Let's have a look here. Here's two folders, and we're going to edit the video today called Kitchen Facing Sink. Here we go. I've selected the corresponding files. Notice that in each case they are uh, 268 megabytes and 723am, 722am. So I know that these files are matched up correctly. I'm going to open them now in Autopano Video Pro and uh, it wants me to drag videos here. So here we go. I drag these two videos over and a new file is created. Step one, super important. We need to synchronize the audio on these. So I click Synchro up here, and then I'm using audio to synchronize. Okay, the two cameras are rarely going to be aligned, even if you use the remote control to start them. So this step is very important. You see in this case that there is a 25 millisecond difference between the two. Okay, we hit the Apply button, and now it's time to stitch these images together. You'll notice that I am obstructing the view in one of these cameras on the right side, and that's going to make some trouble for us when we're stitching. So if you look at this timeline in the bottom, this video tool works like any other video editor you're familiar with. You can see at the end of the movie, my hand's blocking. This would be a terrible time to stitch. Let's put it in the middle where there are no obstructions. It's time to click the stitch button up top. We need to tell it what kind of equipment we're using. We're gonna click lens model. And then we're going to hit this other stitch button over here. That causes a dialog box to appear. We need to type in 8.20 millimeters, and we need to tell it that we're using a fisheye lens. Those are the exact settings for the Kodak SP360 4K, which happens not to be in the Autopano list of options. Okay, some new things appeared, and we're going to have a preview on the right side. Here we go. Um, so now we can see these two cameras the left camera and the right camera, or A and B, stitched together to form one panorama. Here is the edit button. I click that now. You might get a dialog box uh, discussing the latest version. Don't worry about that. And now Autopano Giga is going to open. Choose one frame of the video or one moment and Autopano Video sends a JPEG of cameras one and two or however many cameras you have over to the Giga software, Giga does the stitching. So now if I open Giga, oops, where are we? Here, I see this was some previous thing I was working on. I'm going to close that by clicking this little red box on the top right, uh, no save changes. And here's the video that I want to edit. So I can double click that, or I can click this edit button. And now I've got the editing tool. So you see many controls across the top here, but there's only a few that we care about. You need to select the Move tool, and it'll take a few minutes, give yourself a few minutes to get used to how the Move tool works. And in fact, I'm going to turn off those grid lines, and I'm going to turn on the center point. Dragging up and down the center line will make you look down, look to the center, or look up. If you drag horizontally along the center line, then that's like turning your head and looking around the room. And you'll notice it's not distorting things. While I'm doing this drag around, everything moves smoothly. Now, dragging up and down does something very radical to the perspective, but dragging horizontally is just like turning your head. Suppose this is the way your image comes up, and you want to straighten this out and you're confused, right? Because wherever you click and drag it around, everything looks like a funhouse. So how do you get from here to where you want to be? One tool you can use is by clicking this verticals option. And what you do is find a whole bunch of things inside the scene that should be vertical, such as the edge of these cabinets and the door frame. You see what I'm clicking? I'm, I'm drawing these blue lines from things that should be vertical, uh, and I'm doing some on the left side and some on the right side. Let's get that refrigerator door and the edge of the refrigerator and this door frame and the edge of the oven. Okay, 
And so now you see that if you look at these blue lines, they are in, at, in all different angles. And through each blue line, there is a yellow perpendicular that's, uh, that's showing what the horizon would be if that's vertical. So after I've drawn these blue lines, um, I need to click this check mark and the software will attempt to align all of these things and give me a vertical image. See, now our room is restored to being much closer to the vertical that we wanted. I'm gonna click the move tool again, adjust it a tiny bit to make things straight. And we need to decide where we want the person who starts watching this video uh, to be looking. What, what is the center of this room? And um, for that, you know, in this video, I don't really know what the answer is going to be. Let's, uh, let's guess that it's this doorway. Okay. Um, by the way, if you change your mind after rendering about, if you change your mind about what you want to be the initial perspective, then you're going to have to reopen the video in this software and re-render. Now that I know where we're looking, my concern, my next concern is the quality of the stitch, whether our objects are being displayed correctly. I notice on the floor, for instance, that we have some double lines. Uh, do you see in the center of the frame? And that doesn't look correct. I also see that this door frame uh, is a ghosted image or that there's a double of it. And uh, the last thing that I notice is that we see these, these curved lines. The cameras were not set to the same exposure as each other. And uh, the software is going to correct that for us later. Okay, the hardest part, the most important part of this is aligning uh, the camera A and camera B with one another. We do that using control points. So you click the control point tool and that opens the control point editor. From here, you get a list of all the cameras. If you were shooting with six or 10 GoPros, this would be a much bigger deal. But in this case, we only have two cameras. You need to click one of them. In this case, there's only one other choice. So we select that choice. This is the way we want the tool to look. We've got one of the cameras on the left side, one of the cameras on the right side. And the software has taken a guess as to what, um, uh, what should be the connections between these two cameras. Um, what we're trying to do is to find things that are in camera one and things that are in camera two and connect them to each other. I'm going to make these windows a little smaller. What we want to do is to be comparing our work in the control point editor with um, uh, with the, uh, the panoramic view so that we can see whether the problem's gone away, such as the ghosting over here on this door. In the control points editor, use the auto tool, select things that appear in both cameras and guide the computer to understand which things are which. So things that are on the left side of one are going to be on the right side of the other. Over here, I see there's a little white object on that counter and that little white object is over here too. So that means these two areas that I just selected line up with each other somewhat. Here we have the top of the door and here we have the top of the door. And here we have the door lock and here we have the door lock. Selecting as many things as I can that I recognize in, uh, in camera one and camera two. And the computer is picking uh, control points in order to help guide the display. So now I move the control point window out of the way and I need to click this optimize button. You see it says needed over here. That means that there have been changes made in the control points and the software hasn't compensated for them yet. So I'm gonna click that button and now watch this window and I'm going to hope, ah, you see it just popped into place. That's what I'm looking for. So now it no longer says optimize needed. This problem with the door frame seems to have gone away, at least on top. On the bottom, it looks like we still have some trouble with the door frame. So I'm gonna go back to the control points editor and see, can I do anything to help the computer to get the bottom of that door frame correct? I notice there are very few control points there. I'm going to try it again. And in fact, I'm going to carpet bomb it a second time. And now I see that optimization is needed again over here. So I click this button and I'm watching, I see it just got a little bit closer. Okay, 
there is one more step that we can do in here, which is to click this blend button. And the short version is that blend uses all of Autopano's brains. Autopano uh, Giga is very, very smart stitching software and it has special technology for avoiding things like double images. So um, the last step is to try is to use that button and that's the way your final image is going to look. Um, there is one setting that matters for it, which is cutting. Cutting has to do with how it stitches the two cameras together, whether it fades from one to another and so on. And the, um, the, option, the option called smart is sometimes better and sometimes the option called ISO or ISO is better. And while I make this change, if you look in the, right in the center of the image, um, towards the top, you can see what's happened differently. I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit and show you what I mean. Let's see. So on this cabinet, we've got a stitch line happening that's someplace up here. Um, let's see. I just clicked none on the stitching and, uh, and it's very unpleasant what's happening between the cameras. You can see that this, uh, this track light is doubled, for instance. Um, if I click uh, smart cutting, then uh, we've got a very nice image up here. There's a little bit of distortion on the cabinet, but it's very subtle. Um, and if I click ISO, then now we've got a sort of sharper line that's happened right over here. Yeah, you see, and this cabinet door has three panels, one, two, three, and the one on the left has been somewhat distorted and the molding is a little bit wrong over here. So I'm going to select smart cutting and the problems aren't completely gone. Now the, the problem with the track light happens over here a little bit and the molding is over here a little bit, but I think this is more subtle. And for the most part, uh, we've got a pretty clean image. Okay, once again, to see the difference, look on the floor in the center. Um, this, is with, uh, this is with no intelligent blending, and you see that many of these tiles are doubled, which is an absolute mess. And then we put the smart cutting on, and the floor looks correct. So we've got a beautifully stitched image, and we're now going to hit save. And uh, now we're going to flip back to AutoPanel Video Pro. Now we've got a nicer looking image. Um, click the render button and we're going to choose 3840 as the width for the output type uh, I would suggest choosing H.264 MP4 the uh, frames per second is as original video uh, we need to choose a name for the file and um, you can choose to redo that so now it's time to render click the render button for the size we're going to choose 3840 pixels wide and that will cause a vertical height of 1920 this is the highest resolution that YouTube allows us to upload now under output type h.264 is fine and uh, the frames per second should be as original video. Now choose a file name and instead of putting this into the same folder as your camera work, let's put this into a new folder, give it a name like stitched and that's all fine. Click on save. Now click the render button. What we have here now is a queue and you can move on to go do your next project. So. Now we know how to render. If you go to the finder and open your folders after that batch render is finished, you'll find your movie. And if you launch the GoPro VR player on your computer, you can drag this movie into it and you can have the 360 experience that you've just created. Have a look around, see that it looks the way you wanted it to and enjoy. Thanks for watching.